Assalamu alaikum guys and welcome to another episode of Small to Jannah. Elections, more specifically the British elections are happening in a couple of weeks time. But the lead up to them, boy what a joke. But to be fair elections happening anywhere have become pretty much of a joke anyway. They just give us the voters just the illusion of choice when it's literally like heads I win tails you lose. But Jeremy Corbyn is one of those few people that is actually a glimmer of hope. But when you see this glimmer of hope being serenaded with nonsense frankly, it does go to show the times that we're living in frankly. <laughs> Alright guys, so who you're endorsed by says a lot about you. Why? Because it shows whose interest you're serving. Can you think of anybody who stuck up for the bankers as much as I did? I, I, I defended them a day in, day out. Let's take our friend Boris Johnson, who still hasn't found his comb that fell behind the sofa a very long time ago, but he's just made do. He's been given the thumbs up by our long lost friend, Tommy Robinson. So I am the king of the whole Islam race! What the hell is this? Billah. Also, of course, the legendary Hazrat Trump. What a stupid question that is. What a stupid question. He's given his go ahead to Nigel Farage and Boris Johnson. Of course, we've got the English genius himself, Narendra Modi of India. Who is now currently locking down 8 million Kashmiris. But because Labour spoke out, they are strictly against the Labour Party mate. But of course, let's not forget the leader of Israel, Mr. Netanyahu. He's already being charged with bribery and all sorts, but let's put that to the side. And of course, where would he be without the super rich? The super rich are also supporting Boris. In fact, they said if Corbyn comes in, we're leaving mate. Oh no, please don't go. Who cares? You wanna go? Go on flipping do one mate. You're not paying taxes here anyway. But when you look at Corbyn, this guy has been attacked from all angles mate. Even groups that don't really get involved with outward politics like MI6. These guys are jumping in as well. Forget being in the secret service. They don't even need to hide their allegiances now. Then you got the chief rabbi, never heard of him. He decides to speak out against Jeremy Corbyn as well. You have the balanced BBC, yeah that's right. They've been making a lot of mistakes sadly. I mean there was one clip where Boris Johnson had a reef and he just cocked that up mate. He did it the wrong way around and he messed it up. But when the BBC showed it, they suddenly used the clip from years ago where he did it the right way around. They apologized afterwards. Secondly, when Boris came on stage, the crowd started laughing. The BBC lobbed the laugh out. Again, they apologized afterwards saying, oh, it was a mistake. And thirdly, you've probably seen there's an interview going viral of Jeremy Corbyn where everybody's just using it to bash him. Naturally, you'd expect Boris to be interviewed by the same person. But no, the BBC say that interview is yet unconfirmed. And they're showing pictures of Boris Johnson eating a scone. Forget the fact that he's saying Islamophobic and racist comments and thinking on saying the NHS is gonna be sold off. Nah mate, this is how the guy eats a scone. But it's very suspicious how all of these mistakes of the BBC are pro Boris, but not a single mistake is pro Corbyn. And like I said, Boris Johnson, clear Islamophobia. I mean, there's still articles emerging of stuff he's written in the past that's clearly Islamophobic, racist. I mean, this guy's like a treasure trove of bigotry. We were speaking amongst each other as friends and we were just marveling over how powerful the media has become, how somebody that's actually worthy of leadership has come to the surface and is running but people just aren't interested. They'd rather go for the bumbling buffoon that is Boris Johnson than Jeremy Corbyn and they just plastering him with anti-semitism which let's face it most of it is untrue. I mean here's an article of him being called anti-semitic because of the way he pronounced the name. So as you can see the newspapers are fully 
fully in attack Corbin mode. They're not even hiding their allegiance. We have the entire weight of Boris Johnson's Tory media print militia. We've got it all every single day. They own it. The Tory graph, the daily basket case, the mail, the scum, the times. And they bring us the two great plagues, austerity and Brexit, to crush our lives, to privatise, sell off the NHS, to keep you in poverty. This reminds me of a very profound quote that's been attributed to Malcolm X, which is of how the media has the power and influence to convince you that a hero is a villain and a villain is a hero. Frankly guys, I'd be very, very surprised if Corbyn wins. I mean, everyone is literally on his case. It's sad that you've got somebody that's standing up for the underprivileged, for the nurses, for the students, you know, the people that normally get left out. And, he, and people see him as the enemy and Boris Johnson, who's trying to sell off the NHS, racist, Islamophobic, you know, just clueless individual. And people are like, yeah, he's, he's who we want representing our country. Let's leave it there, guys. Until next time. Assalamu alaikum.